Welcome to A-Level Physics, looking at electromagnetic induction. We define electromagnetic induction by the process in which a current is induced in a magnetic field. Michael Faraday is generally credited with the discovery of electromagnetic induction in 1831. When Michael Faraday made his discovery of electromagnetic induction, he hypothesised that a changing magnetic field is necessary to induce a current in a nearby circuit. To test his hypothesis, he made a coil by wrapping a paper cylinder with wire. He connected the coil to a galvanometer and then moved the magnets back and forth inside the cylinder. So first we'll look at inducing magnetic fields. Method 1. Pick up a metal rod and swing it about in a magnetic field, for example the Earth's magnetic field. Although you won't realise it, you've just induced an EMF across the ends of the rod. EMF stands for electromotive force, which is the energy supplied to an electric charge. It is measured in joules per coulomb, and one volt means one joule per coulomb. The factors affecting the amount of induced EMF are a longer bar would sweep out more area of the field, a stronger field would mean you swept out the more field lines when moving the same distance, and a faster swipe would mean you swept out more area of the field per second. So the induced EMF depends on the length of the conductor, the strength of the magnetic field, and the speed at which the conductor cuts the field. Method 2 Method 1 shows that moving the conductor through a magnetic field induces an EMF. However, it is possible to induce an EMF in a stationary conductor by changing the magnetic field around it. I will explain this in more detail when we look at Faraday's law later on in the video. We will now look at magnetic flux. The magnetic field strength B multiplied by the area swept out by conductor A is called the magnetic flux. Okay, and it's showed by this symbol phi. Okay, more specifically lowercase phi. The unit of flux is Weber or WB. You can think of flux as being the amount of magnetic field that you've swept through. The more magnetic flux you sweep through per second, the more EMF you induce. Remember, the EMF must be perpendicular to the field. OK. Note, don't confuse magnetic flux with magnetic flux density, which is another name for magnetic field strength. The magnetic flux density or magnetic field strength can be defined as the magnetic flux perpendicular to unit area. Next, we'll look at magnetic, magnetic flux linkage. When we are dealing with the stationary conductors in changing magnetic fields, we often work with loops and coils of wire. The area A that you use for a single loop of wire is obviously pi r squared. But what if you have a coil with a number of loops? Simply treat, treat each loop of the coil as if it was on its own. Hence, if you have n loops in the coil, you have n times the area and therefore n times the flux. This is called flux linkage, shown by capital Phi. For example, what is the flux linkage in a coil of 15 turns and an area of 25 cm squared in a field strength of 5t? So the flux linkage is equal to n times the magnetic flux. Alright, so it's equal to n times the magnetic flux, which is also equal to n times BA, and then it's equal to 15 times 5 times 25 and times 10 to the minus 4, okay, and that is equal to 0 0.187 WB. Okay, note, area must be in metres squared, and the conversion factor is 10,000 centimetres squared to 1 metre squared. So let's now look at Faraday's law. For a conductor in a changing magnetic field, the 
factors affecting the size of the induced EMF or how quickly the magnetic field is changing, the number of turns or loops of the conductor in the field, and this leads to Faraday's law, which states the EMF induced is equal to the rate of change of mag magnetic flux linkage or the rate of flux cutting. Faraday's law is shown by this equation. Join me for part two, where I'll be carrying on with Faraday's law.